happy first of October. Hi everyone. Welcome back or welcome if you're new. Hi. How are you? Oh, I've got the braids going on. Some Wednesday Adam vibe. So Halloween, October, my favorite time of the entire year. And I figured why not implement some like little new series on my channel. So I'm going to have, you know, one to two times a week. We'll see how much, you know, I'm into it. I'm going to upload scary stories and I'm gonna have to do this during the daytime because there's a roof right here so the sun kind of like goes down and hides and it's not fun so there's no lighting and then I'm gonna be home alone forever so let's not scare myself so I'm on reddit and I've never used reddit before so I don't know what I'm doing but I saved some stories so let me read you some oh I'm not nervous at all Okay, here's one. My voice, but not me. Another weird title, I know. This one didn't happen to me, but to my mom. Happened in the same mobile home. So I'm assuming that they have another story up, but I don't know. Maybe I'll read some more of them, but like another time. <laughs> um, one thing I need to explain that plays a small part in this is that my parents' room had their bathroom attached to it. I hate when things don't have good, like, the right words, and then, like, there, there, and there. <sighs> Anyways, when I say this, I don't mean it had a door that led to the bathroom. I mean, there was no wall separating their bathroom from their room. Wrong there. It was just all open. So I was two years old, my brother was four, and my younger brothers weren't born yet. We were all sleeping in my parents' room. My mom woke up at some point throughout the night. She had to use the bathroom, but didn't want to use hers as she thought the light and the noise might wake us up. She decided to use the bathroom at the other side of the house, closest to mine and my brother's rooms. She kept the lights off so no one would be disturbed, and seeing that it wasn't hard to navigate the small house, there was no point. While she was in the bathroom, she heard a knock at the door and asked who it was. She says she heard me asking if she was almost done using the bathroom, and she told me she was and to just wait for her so we could go back to her room and get back to sleep. When she came out, it was too dark to see anything, so she just said, okay, go to the room, I'll be right behind you, and heard footsteps run to the bedroom. <sighs> when she arrived in the room a couple seconds later, I was lying in her spot. She asked me to scoot over, but got no reply. She decided to grab a small flashlight, and when she pointed it at the bed, she noticed I was asleep and stuck between my dad and my older brother. There was no way I could have been able to get out or get back in without waking them. To this day, she has no idea who she was talking to and says there was always something off about me when I was a kid and that I was terrified of my own bedroom, the room closest to the bathroom she used at night. No thanks, I'm good. I have my own memories of like being afraid of certain rooms in a house that I might tell on this channel eventually, but like right now is not that time. I totally get being afraid of certain rooms in your house because been there, done that. I'm glad I'm over it. My house is very small, so I'm not really afraid of much. <laughs> I'm getting off topic. I'm gonna read another one and it's called The Bedroom Under the Kitchen. I moved out of my parents' house and into an apartment right before I turned 21 and basically waited tables and partied for the next four years. I kind of woke up one day and decided I wanted a better life and wanted to go back to college. I talked it over with my parents and they decided to let me move back in on one condition that I made college a priority. Within a week of moving back in, I regretted it. The house rules were back and I was used to doing whatever I wanted whenever I wanted. But now I had a curfew. Understandably, my parents didn't want me coming and going in the middle of the night when they were trying to sleep and couldn't have friends over too late. My favorite times of living in their house, again, was when they would go away on the weekends, which was quite often because they had a second place up north. So one weekend they were gone, I had the house to myself and I had to work early the next morning. So I'm trying to go to bed a little earlier than usual. My bedroom was in a corner of the basement right beneath the kitchen. I'm laying in bed reading in absolute silence. 
Suddenly, I hear a loud boom above me, the type of noise you'd hear when someone pounds their foot down very hard on a wooden floor. I literally dropped to my book and thought, what was that? I know I'm home alone and that I locked all the doors, so now I'm scared. I figured if someone was in the house, calling the cops won't do anything, so I didn't bother. When I was a teen, I bought an airsoft gun that looked like a pistol and I painted the orange cap black so it looked like a real gun. Edgy, I know. I grabbed that out of my closet and decided to see what's upstairs. I saw in a movie once where if you want to scare an intruder who thinks they're alone in the house to creep up and start acting crazy. So I slowly, still in the dark, make my way upstairs, get to the top, count to five, and start flipping on lights, waving the fake gun around and screaming stuff like, get out of here, you're dead when I find you. Nobody in the kitchen. I tear the whole house apart and check every door and window. Nobody is in the house no broken or open windows, and all the doors are locked. I go back to the kitchen and look around better. Nothing fell off a shelf and was laying on the ground. Needless to say, so I'm even more freaked out, so I spent the night on the couch in the living room. When my parents came home the next day, I told them what happened. They laughed and said it probably was just the house settling. I told them no way, that wasn't the sound of a house settling. That was a loud pounding on the floor. The sound never happened again, and to this day, I still wonder what it was. I would too. I am one of those people that like, I don't know if I want to like investigate the little noises, um, or if I just want to like hide. I, I don't like to hide under the covers because then I'm like, well then if it's here, I can't see it. And even if like, it can see me, I can't see it, and I don't know how to like plan my moves, you know? But going to investigate, I'm kind of small. I'm not very intimidating. I'd probably, I'd probably die. This last one is called New House, New Brother? Question mark? Oh, this is the same, this is the same person. They have really odd titles because they're like me again with another dumb title, I know. Sorry for posting so much today, but I figured it's better start today, so yeah. I feel like we'd be friends. First encounter. We moved into my current house 11 years and one month ago. When we first moved in, my mom and I were outside talking to our new neighbors. My dad and brothers were out grocery shopping or running errands, can't exactly remember. And the only pets we had were my two dogs in their kennels inside the house and our two cats in my bedroom because they were nervous about the new house so we closed them in the room while we unpacked. I looked up at the window of my parents' room and could see a shadow covering the corner of the window but assumed it was part of their bed. I kept staring at the window trying to guess what it could be when the shadow moved suddenly to the next window. I was confused but then thought maybe one of the cats got out of my room. I hurried to check only to find them both asleep on my bed and the dog still in their kennels. I went into my mom's room only to find that the lights were now off. I rushed out of the house and told my mom but she didn't believe me. Yeah moms are like that. I mean not my mom if I tell her her house is haunted she believes me. <laughs> Second encounter. The next day, around the same time, around 9 p.m., I stepped outside to get something out of my dad's car. I looked out the passenger side window to see my brother standing there. I could only see up to his shoulder because he was taller than the car. I asked if he needed something but got no reply. I got out of the car and turned, but he was gone. When I went inside, I saw him fast asleep on the couch. Third encounter. This one happened to my mother and was when she finally believed me about this. She woke up early and my little sister, who was already living with us at this point, was showering and getting ready for school. My mom looked out of her bedroom and saw my brother walk out of his room and cross towards the laundry room. His room is right next to my mom's and the laundry room is across from my brother's room. At that moment, my sister walked into my parents' room and asked my mom if she if she should wake up my little brother. My mom told her he was already awake. She had just seen him walk by the door. My sister walked into my brother's room, then back to my mom, telling her he was in bed. My mom decided to see for herself and walked to my brother's room to find him still sleeping in his bed. She woke me up and asked if I walked past her room, <laughs> but I had still been asleep. That's when she told me what happened and never doubted me again. Fourth encounter. This one isn't much of an encounter, but just something I learned to live with. Right outside my bedroom door, directly to the left, is the hallway bathroom. My little brother, the person we keep 
seeing look identical to my little brother spends a lot of time in that bathroom when you walk by you sometimes see him standing there looking in the mirror but he will be gone almost immediately no thanks i'm good i'm just gonna wrap up this because my my camera is gonna die because why wouldn't it i hope you enjoy this little mini series if you want me to continue doing it great because i'm going to and if you don't oh well don't come back. No, please do, but like, I'm gonna keep doing it for the entire month of October, so you might as well just get used to it. So yeah, I will see you next time with more scary stories, and have a spooky night.